Ayan, magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat. Good evening po sa inyong lahat. At uh, nasa bagong month na po tayo, bagong series. At uh, ito yung first Wednesday ng month ng December at 18 days na lang ay Christmas na. Kaya tapikin niyo yung katabi niyo. <laughs> no? Sabi niyo sa kanya, Merry Christmas. Pati niyo na sila, 18 days na lang. No? I think it's two weeks na lang, 18 days or <laughs> no? um, so, ang series natin for this month ay pinangalanan ko originally the Advent. Pero dahil ang church natin ay nagkaroon din ng bagong series no? every Sunday at ang title this is the Advent, binago ko na yung series natin for this month. At ang series natin, although related pa rin sa Christmas, it's about, ang, ang title ng series natin for this month is A Christmas Journey. Yan, A Christmas Journey. So, pag-uusapan natin kasi yung sa Sunday, it's the Advent. So, it's ang um, story nun is about uh, before yung birth ni Jesus Christ, no? But uh, in, in our series dito, eh, doon tayo papunta sa story mismo hanggang sa panganak si Jesus Christ. Or sa, sa, sa event na yun. I'm planning to uh, take all the series <laughs> for this December. So, pray for me. Pero originally, ito ay dapat ang mag-speak ang ating mga uh, local mission, missionary pastors natin. Uh, pero siyempre, meron din silang mga series din sa kanilang mga churches. So, yeah, ayan, pag-pray niya po ako. <laughs> so, I'd like uh, you to get your Bibles and uh, please stand in honor sa pagbasa ng kanyang salita. Medyo mahaba itong babasahin natin. Pero let's enjoy uh, reading God's Word today. Sabay-sabay natin basahin ang Luke chapter 2. And we'll start from verse 1 up to verse 20. I'll be reading from the NASB or NASB version. Uh, kung gusto nyo sabay-sabay at united tayo, you can look at sa ating screen dyan po. Ready? Begin. Now, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all the people on, were on their way to register for the census, each to his own city. Now, Joseph also went up from Galilee from the city of Nazareth to Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was betrothed to him and was pregnant while there, they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock at night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood near them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And so the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For the day in the city of David, there was been born for you a Savior, who is the Christ, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly army of angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among people, with whom he is pleased. When the angel had departed from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem, then see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph, and the baby was he, as he lay in the manger. When they had seen him, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who, got, who heard it were amazed about the things which were told them by the shepherds. 
But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that, that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. May the Lord be praised sa pagbasa ng kanyang salita. Let us pray po muna bago tayo magsiupo. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege of um, being with you and fellowshipping with your word. We pray for your protection. We pray for your provision. And we pray for uh, the Holy Spirit to work in each one's heart, Panginoon. And we commit to your time together. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, this chapter or this story, I'm planning to uh, give a series dito dahil dyan sa binasa natin from verse 1 to 20 ay napaka-rich na passage. No? At marami tayong makukuha dyan, matututunan na principles na uh, ibibigay sa atin na, na, ng Panginoon through this 20 verses na binasa natin. No? So, I'm planning na hatiin siya sa apat. Uh, this, uh, itong, itong series natin na to, Chris, a, a Christmas Journey. No, but for today, um, ang title ng ating message for today is The Manger's Message. No, dahil dito sa, dito sa book ng Luke, no, dito lang binanggit yung word na manger nung pinanganak si Jesus Christ. Hindi mo siya makikita sa Matthew, sa Mark, and sa John. No? And, and, and itong, chap, itong story na to actually, Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 1 to 20, is the most detailed, um, uh, yung, yung, the most detailed about uh, yung birth ni Jesus Christ. No? And uh, perhaps, pinaka, isa sa pinakakilala na stories about uh, Jesus' birth. No? It's a familiar story sa atin din. Na actually itong story na to nag-inspire sa napakaraming Christmas songs. Nag-inspire din siya sa napakaraming Christmas cards, no? Diyan yan kinuha. Books, even mga mga themes, no? But sadly, the world celebrates yung birth ni Jesus Christ um, sa na, sa napakaraming maling reasons, no? Christmas has become actually an, an excuse. Nagiging excuse na lang ang Christmas for self-indulgence or yung, yung talagang pleasure sa sarili. Materialism and partying. Sabi nga ni Pastor Adad nung siya ay nag-speak, ang Christmas ay nagiging commercialized na. Na namimiss ng marami yung totoong meaning ng Christmas. Just look yung empty chairs natin. No? Napakaraming uh, bakante. No? Now, this season supposed to be uh, a season na talagang mas lalo natin ma-appreciate kung sino si Jesus Christ because we are remembering yung first, yung sabi naman ni Pastor Joshua sa atin, the first coming no? ni Jesus Christ. But amidst this commercialized Christmas, no. God's great gift, the first Christmas gift, ay hanggang ngayon still unrecognized sa napakaraming parts ng mundo. It's easy to sing Christmas carols, no? But how many of us honestly face Christ Himself and His challenge sa atin? sa pag-follow natin sa Kanya. How many of us really honestly can say that you are counting the cost of following Christ? No. Sabi nga dun sa story, there's no room for Jesus Christ nung siya ay pinanganak. There's room for many things today. Room, for ev- room even for much about Jesus Christ. But ang tanong, is there room for Jesus Christ? Look, dito sa story na to, makita natin tatlong beses binanggit yung manger. 
No? And, and, and I believe God today ay merong, merong ituturo sa atin about the manger that would make our Christmas more joyful and uh, meaningful. Okay? So, makikita natin yung manger na yan in Luke chapter 2, verse 7, verse 12, and verse 16. So, ang tanong natin, why? No? Bakit kaya minention ni Luke, or siyempre, with the help of the Holy Spirit, mentions the manger three times? In just few verses, as he tells the story of Jesus' birth. Anong importance nito? No? Why does... He mentioned this three times. Bakit? Another question, bakit si Jesus Christ, King and Savior, place where animals were kept? Bakit siya nilagay doon sa manger? No? Kaya ang, sabi, ang title ng message natin is Manger's Message. I have three points for today's devotion, uh, study ng ating salita. But una, tingnan muna natin yung meaning ng manger. What's what is a manger? No, a manger came from the Greek word pathne, which means a crib or a feeding box. No, sa context niyan, syempre, yung, yung, yung manger na yan is feeding box ng mga hayop. No? Sabi ng ibang scholars, it's a feed box or a stall. Kaya maraming scholars believe na si Jesus Christ, it's either nasa stable or nasa cave. No? Kasi during that time daw, ay, ang lugar ay puro, puro stones pa. No? Pero ako, ako pa, mas, mas leaning towards ako doon sa stable. No? Kasi kung titingnan natin yung context, lahat ng tao pumunta sa kanika nilang mga lugar to register for the census. No? So kung maraming tao, it's, yung inn is full, and Nang galing, maraming tao nang galing sa iba't ibang lugar so ibig sabihin meron silang mga daladalang hayop no mga rides nila <laughs> so logically pwede nating isipin na si Jesus Christ was was born in a stable at dun dun siya sa talagang manger no lalagyan or feeding box ng mga mga hayop na sinakyan ng mga pumunta doon so kung sa time natin ngayon kumbaga pinanganak si Jesus Christ sa parking lot no. So I'm, I'm mas leaning towards ako dun sa, sa stable kaysa sa cave. Kasi may napanood ako once pinalabas natin yun dito, pinanganak si Jesus Christ na sa cave. No. Kasi may, may mga Bible scholars believe na yung manger dyan is a, is a cave. No. Dahil noong time na yan ay uh, batuhan pa noon. No. Pero anyway, no, ano naman yung ano mang side yung tingnan natin dyan, Ang importante, pinanganak si Jesus Christ. Amen? <laughs> pinanganak si Jesus Christ. At ang manger ay may message yan. There's a reason why Luke, uh, si Luke nilagay niya yung manger dyan ng tatlong beses. At meron siyang significance na ibibigay sa atin. Number one, na uh, gusto ko ipakita sa inyo, na message ng manger, the manger points to Jesus' humble, humble beginning. The manger points to Jesus' humble birth or humble beginning. No, makita niyo dyan. Uh, if you open your Bibles in Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 8, no, verse 6 says, Who, as he already existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a bond servant. And being made in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance of, as a man, he humbled himself and becoming obedient to the point of death. Death on the cross. Surely, see si Jesus Christ, he deserved most elegant surroundings. Tama? He deserved yung, yung, yung pang prince na crib. But instead, Jesus made his appearance on earth in the lowliest circumstances, in the lowliest form. That's the manger. God 
this humble birth conveys a, a special or amazing message sa atin ngayong gabi. That this God, that this God condescended to come to us at naging tao. I remember yung isang pastor natin, ang sabi, nung si Jesus Christ willingly came to us and became a man, sabi niya, mas, mas pinili niya yung illustration niya. Binuin niyo, God pinili niyang maging, parang tayo daw, tapos pinili natin maging baboy. Lowliest form. Even yung first bed ng King of Kings and God ay nasa lowliest form then manger. Instead of coming to earth as a pampered, privileged ruler, Jesus was born in meekness as one of us. He is approachable. He is accessible. He is available. Amen? Walang palace gates na harang. Walang palace guards na pwedeng mag-hinder or mag-prevent sa atin from coming to Him. The King of Kings came humbly and His first bed is manger. And kung, baba, kung titingnan niyo po yung binasa natin na verse from Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 part B, becoming obedient to the point of death. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? Jesus' life starts low and ends lower. The manger was a step one on the Calvary's road. Step one yun. Just imagine, from manger to the cross. The manger points Jesus, points to Jesus Humble beginning. Number two, the manger, just for the sake of alliteration, the manger points to Jesus as a hunger satisfier. Bakit? <laughs> the manger was a sign of what he came to do. Kasi yung manger, sabi ko kanina, yung meaning ng manger is a feeding box. Kung saan, dun kumakain yung mga hayop na nandun. It's a feeding box. And in John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Jesus was of course speaking about spiritual sustenance or spiritual na satisfaction sa lahat ng magre-receive sa Kanya. Hindi, si Jesus Christ pumunta dito hindi lang para mamigay ng bread. <laughs> Naalala nyo? John chapter 6, ito yung, ver, ito yung chapter na kung saan sinabi ni Jesus, I am the bread of life. Pero before niya sinabi yon meron muna siyang miracle na ginawa. Okay? At yung miracle na yon is pinakain niya yung 5,000 na tao. And after pakainin, sinabi niya to, I am the bread of life. Ibig sabihin lang nun, Jesus came not to give, not just to give bread, but to be the bread. Huh? I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. I am the bread of life. Jesus is our bread of life. His abundant love satisfies our hunger for a relationship with God. He came to offer Himself as bread for our souls. He came to satisfy a hunger that could not be satisfied ng anumang meron dito sa mundong to. Siya lang ang makakasatisfy ng soul natin. In this life, we wrestle, no? We wrestle 
with the temptation to believe that if we just have enough bread in this life, we would be happy. Hindi lang tayo, hindi lang mga tao outside uh, yung sa Christian world, but kahit tayo, we are also tempted to believe that if we just had enough bread, we will be happy. Pero hindi po yun, no? Sabi ng Panginoon, if you, if you, if you receive me, you will not be hungry again. The manger is reminding us that Jesus is the only one who can satisfy the hunger of our hearts. Yan ang binibigay ng, yan ang message ng manger. The manger points to Jesus as the hunger satisfier. He is our bread of life. And lastly, my third point, the manger points to Jesus as a hero. Ginamit ko po yung word na hero for the sake of alliteration. <laughs> Para madaling tandaan. Pero it points to Jesus as our rescuer, as our deliverer. Verse 11, sabi ng angel sa mga shepherds, for today in the city of David, There has been born for you, what? A Savior. Who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And alam nyo po, itong mga Israelites na to, they have been waiting for a long time. For a Savior to come. For a hero to come. And siguro, sa sobrang tagal na nilang naghihintay para maalis na sila, yun yung isip nila, di ba? From the captivity, dyan sa Roman Empire na yan, they've been waiting. And they're expecting for a sign. No? Pero ano sign yung binigay ng angels? Sabi ng angel, punta kayo doon, and then you will see a baby wrapped in clothes. But I believe yung wrapped in clothes, that's not the sign. Kasi lahat naman ng baby, pag pinanganak, binabalutan. Tama ba? <laughs> so pag pumunta sila ron, makakita sila ng baby, hindi nila alam kung sino. So merong unique sign ng Panginoon. Kaya itong manger na to, hindi, lang, hindi to aksidente. It is well planned by God. At ito yung gagamitin niyang sign para malaman ng mga nandoon na yung babing nasa manger is the Savior. Dahil walang baby na ilalagay mo sa box na pinagkakainan ng mga hayop. Make sense ba? It's well planned ng Panginoon. No. They have been waiting for this moment. So what's the sign? The manger. Soter. Sozo. Ang Greek ng Savior na ginamit dyan, na ang ibig sabihin is rescue from peril. And yung rescue from peril, galing naman sa Greek word na saos, which means safe and delivered. So, ibig sabihin, pagsasamahin natin yung mga meanings na yan sa word na ginamit na Savior, it refers to the agent of salvation or agent of a deliverance. The one who rescues. The one who delivers. Hindi lang the one who delivers, hindi lang the one who rescues, but preserves. Yeah. Kung baga, dadalhin ka dun sa place na kung saan I save. Hindi ka lang niya aalisin doon, but dadalhin ka niya doon sa place na safe. That's the meaning of the Savior. Pero tulad nga sinabi ko, hero lang ginamit ko just for the sake of alliteration. No? In the context of, of Jesus, no? of course, ni-rescue tayo ng Panginoon from the penalty of sin. Amen? 
He rescued us from the power of sin, and He rescued us from the presence of sin. Ngayon, um, dinagdagan pa ng mga anghel yung sinabi niya sa mga shepherds. Sabi niya, pumunta kayo doon at kapag may nakita kayong bata na nakabalot ng cloth and then nakalagay sa manger, that's the Savior. Hindi lang siya Savior kasi dinagdagan pa ng angel. Anong sabi? There has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Huh? Bakit? Importante yon Because yung Christ dyan ay to separate Jesus from other other Savior no? or other heroes na meron during that time. No? So nilagyan ng Christ. And Christ I came from the Greek word Christos at ang ibig sabihin is to consecrate to an office. The anointed one. The Messiah. So ibig sabihin, He's the only one. He's the only Savior. He is the Messiah. The separation of oneself from things that are unclean, especially anything that would contaminate one's relationship with the perfect God. Consecration also carries the connotation of sanctification, holiness, or purity. No? So talagang sineparate si Jesus Christ from other uh, pwedeng maging dumumi sa image ni Jesus Christ. Christ. And then binanggit yung Lord. From the Greek word kurios, na ang ibig sabihin is power and might. At meron siyang uh, kinoconvey niya yung idea of supreme one who is sovereign and possesses absolute authority and ownership and uncontested power. So yung, yung declaration ng angels na yan sa mga shepherd ay pinakita kung sino yung baby. He is a super hero <laughs> with authority, holiness, purity, and power. None like him. And yung Lord nun, it's not just a title, but also signify, signifies a call to action. I will end with this. Kasi marami sa atin kilala si Jesus Christ as Savior. As Christ. But marami sa atin ayaw siyang maging Lord. Kasi yung Lord na binanggit doon is a call to action so that every saint, every um Christian na nagsabi na siya ay follower ni Jesus Christ would willingly reverently bow down to Jesus Christ as Lord. Kaya ang ganda ng sinabi, Savior Christ Lord. If Christ is our Lord, we should live under Him. Consciously, continually, and continually submitting ang, our, our, our wills to Him as His loyal, loving children. Always seeking first His kingdom and His righteousness according to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. So beloved, this Christmas season, we need to ask ourselves, is Jesus Christ your Lord? No? Or is Jesus Christ my Lord? Kasi nung dumating dito si Jesus Christ, He came humbly so that we can approach Him easily. No? At meron siyang mission dito. Meron siyang purpose na... na Gagaw, ginawa, no? And lastly, I, 
He established His authority kahit pagkapanganak niya pa lang. Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Messiah, the Anointed One, and Lord. So I hope and I pray na naging malinaw sa inyo yung message ng manger. Na it points to His humble beginning. It points to Jesus as as our hero. And it points to Jesus as hunger satisfier. So I hope and I pray na marami tayo natutunan for our our time with the with the word of God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are all familiar, Panginoon, sa story ng kapanganakan niyo. But we thank you because in this the simple word manger, manger ginamit ni ni Luke ay nagpakita sa amin kung ano yung pinopoint nito at pinopoint ng manger is si Jesus Christ his humble beginning hunger satisfier and as our hero so today as we celebrate this season of christmas mag-remind po ito sa amin of your of how your great love panginoon na pinakita niyo sa amin we don't deserve this panginoon but because you loved us so much you came and satisfied uh, satisfy our soul kaya panginoon we give you praise and glory just like the shepherds did they glorified your name panginoon nung nakita nila kayo Ganon din po yung aming puso, Panginoon. As we are reminded of this great event. And we are looking forward, Panginoon, for that second coming. Pero this time, hindi na kayo babalik ng mababa. That you will establish your kingdom. And that babalik kayo, Panginoon, na, isa na isang hari magre-rain dito sa lupa. Kaya we give you praise and we are we are excited on that event. And uh, we, we are so thankful for what you have done today. We commit all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.